Yeah. Rachel, are you going to tell people to go, wait, or skip? Well, or... I wanted to give a summary of the movie before we do that. Okay. So we did, we talked, I know we've been talking a while, but it's been It's been like 10 minutes. It's Chelsea at the movies! Yay! So we went and saw... Shazam! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shazam. We went and saw Shazam, which has really good reviews. Solid. Thus far. I think it was Solid at 92 reviews. last time I looked. Shazam is in the DC universe, which uh, many fans have been disappointed in the movies have come out, whereas Marvel has kind of hit it out of the park. Marvel's basically just killing it. DC has kind of dropped the ball. Like, some of their stuff was maybe a little darker than it needed to, maybe didn't make sense, or was just flat out lame. Like, I thought Justice League was just, like, lame and didn't come together. In other ways, they've done really well. Wonder Woman was really, really good. Shazam, this is a not as well known of a character. So, you know, you have Superman and Batman being the top two DC superheroes. Superman, heroes. Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash are like the cream of the crop, right? You got <laughs> Superman and Batman on the top, and then the core you Justice League add people. Add that on, and then Justice League made Aquaman awesome by the way they kind of upgraded him. <laughs> yeah, with Jason Noah or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Well, like. and made him look not like yeah, he's awesome. a dweeb. Um, that is not the Aquaman I saw in the <laughs> in the cartoon when I okay. when I was watching watching these cartoons going on. So now we get like a, a side uh, lower level whatever you want want to call Shazam! it superhero in Shazam, and I remember being really surprised when I heard this was coming out. We had played there. There's a Justice League video game. Yeah. Um, I forget the name of it right at this moment, but I had become familiar with various DC superheroes through this game. So Shazam's in there. The Green Lantern. Yeah. Right, uh, Black Adam. Like, there's all these DC like characters, characters that yeah. like. If I said any more names, you'd be like, "What? Hot girl? Um, that's Hawk, not hot. Hawk." This kind of reminds me of when Marvel did Iron Man, except Marvel did Iron Man early on, yeah. and it was. I thought they carried less of a burden in doing Iron Man because they didn't have any like that much to live up to. I feel the same way about Shazam. Like, doing a Batman or Superman movie is hard because like you have like stuff to live up to that I feel like it makes it easy to try to do too much or not do enough or just completely screw it up. Or counterpoint, it wouldn't be hard if the people in, that were running the Marvel cinema stuff were making a movie. Maybe. Because they made good Spider-Man movie and they made good, they made, they good, made good, all good movies. <laughs> they could do, if they had the source material of Batman and Superman, oh my god. I'm just saying that if you get like, they you made know, a good Avengers movie. build <laughs> to make that? the first Shazam movie, then, like, I don't know, it's the first Shazam movie to me. I don't know if there's been other Shazam movies. I think you get a lot of creative freedom, and you get to really, like, you I know. I think the abject failure of their whole thing, that they started with Batman versus Superman, that people just hate it. I think it freed them up in a lot of ways, because they were free to make Shazam. <laughs> and they did. Just, right, they were free yeah, to make Aquaman true. the way they made Aquaman. Yeah. And they were free to make Shazam the way they made Shazam. Quick overview of Shazam. Shazam is a wizard who has various powers. And I learned today that Shazam is an acronym for where he gets those powers. It's the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules... Something of Achilles, which is Zeus, was, and then another A one. It was Atlas. Atlas, and then what's M? McCarson. <laughs> Something, and and he apparently contains these demons that represent the seven deadly sins. So Shazam does. Yeah, that's what the the monster things were. But that were they weren't in Shazam. They were in. Well, they were in that other temple. Guy. That guy, yeah. Okay. Well, after he was in there. All right. So, like, he kind of holds them. He can lose them. Anyway, uh, Shazam, like, so then the story goes that the wizard gets, like, old and he has to find somebody else to carry on for him. But this person really needs to be pure of heart because the last time this happened, the person wasn't pure of heart and they lit out the seven deadly sins and the world was, like, there was genocide and, like, all this horrible stuff happened. Mm. So... He goes about trying to find people who are pure of heart. Eventually comes to a place where it's the boy that we meet in this movie, and he takes on the powers of Shazam. Billy Batson. <laughs> so, I Kelsey, you. this particular movie, Shazam, go wait or skip. People in the audience, I choose you. <laughs> so go see this movie. It's awesome. It's fun. It's uh, funny. It has a great story. 
it has a really high value content of like good being good and bad things not being desirable and that's awesome so for me i also say go see this movie although later we'll get to what i have some things some problems with the movie but i overall i think that it was enjoyable it was really fun it was funny it had like bright colors the guy like playing like shazam like the superhero and awesome. the kid playing the kid like they did like a really good job um, All the casting I thought was great. Yeah, I, I thought it was just really good. I thought it was a good movie and dealt at the same time um, with some like harder topics. So the kid in this movie that becomes Shazam um, is in the foster care system and is, uh, you know, wants to be with his mother and is trying to find her. And it dealt with um, some of the pain and some of the like uh, trauma that that stays with you like it carries with you and i thought they did a good job dealing with that kind of stuff so i think that it's a, a fun movie and that yeah you should go see it spoilers spoilers shazam okay it doesn't work in real life shazam! <laughs> i've been trying it all it doesn't work yeah so i said the reasons why i like the movie um at the beginning of this we kind of gave like the background on shazam why are there so many things mixed together it's like judeo-christian and Greek mythology, like, I don't understand why that's all mixed together. It just, it doesn't make well, sense Well, I can to me. explain it to you. It's because someone's like, hey, I want to make this comic book. How can <laughs> I just, like, make up an origin And that's story? not from the movie. That is from the <laughs> comic that's, book. That's like, what it's... happens with every I know. I was universe. just like, it's a you little... You had the same problem with the Infinity Stones? A little quick. In the Avengers? It's the same Did they mix, thing. like... Well, it talks about the beginning of the universe and then, like, those stones being... Yeah, elemental. but that just seems like... I don't know. It just... You know. I don't have I don't, a, like Star I, Wars mixes together like Christianity and Buddhism and all kinds of stuff. But like do it in a way that's a little bit better. I mean you literally like the S is for the wisdom of Solomon and then like the H is for the strength of Hercules. Like you're literally in the name just mixing like two things. <laughs> I don't see why that of course like there's a thousand different cultures on the earth. Yeah. And all of them. <laughs> so in this universe then they're all real. Yeah, and maybe even in our own universe, in a way, much there's much truth. Just like the Catholic Church teaches in your yeah. catechism, Rachel, that there's truth in a lot of different cultures. Yeah. So I, I don't... I don't know. I thought it was like a little, like, lazy, lazy writing. Mm, well, well, yeah, it was a late... I mean, again. 30 years ago, whenever yeah. Shazam was made, I mean, like, that's... I don't know, like, it's kind of lazy story... Like, oh, Peter Parker got bit by a radioactive spider, and now he can do all these things. That's, I don't know. It's all kind of like that. So right? maybe, yeah. Maybe that's true. I don't know. That kind of just, like... Don't mess with Rachel's religion! <laughs> just was like, it was a lot of quick mixing of things. Also, there was this thing where the wizard kept trying to find different people. So he just, like, pops into your life when he wants to, and he's like, hey, are you pure of heart? And has, like, this little test. Well, he rejects person Everybody. upon person upon person. And unfortunately, one of the person he rejects ends up being the supervillain. <laughs> yeah. So, like, and in large part, the wizard is the reason why the supervillain exists. Like, he created the problem by rejecting it. Well, him. We, can, we, can't, we can say there's a correlation there, but not causation. <laughs> we don't really know. I'm just saying. Like, maybe you don't go over the whole earth rejecting people after you show them this, like, amazing temple and all this crazy stuff and be like, nah, you're not pure of heart. Here's the other thing. When Billy Batson came in, he didn't have to pass the same purity test because the wizard, the the, de the super villain had already released, found his way back, released the seven deadly sins. So he was kind of like, like, oh, I better find somebody super quick. I can't be taking my sweet ass time anymore. Well, I felt like and, he probably did have to pass the test. I just cut that part out of that scene. Time. Well, some so some people question it because of Billy Batson's behavior well, in that, I, like, when he has his powers, like, he... Yeah, but I think the scene right before he gets the powers it illustrates what the wizard was looking for and when he, his new brother, foster brother, was getting bullied and that he stopped and came back. That's what happened right before that Okay, scene. so using that scene. Yeah. Um, okay. As that was, like, a I test also wondered if... So, People said that, like, so when he has his superpowers, he um, gets a bunch of money from a, robs an ATM machine, um, robs a Coke machine, although I would say that children may not understand that if you can electrify a Coke machine and make all the Cokes come out, I don't know, as a kid, I wouldn't immediately think that was stealing. I'd think it was my lucky day. Um, <laughs> but the ATM machine, definitely stealing. 
But I also wonder if doing wrong things is related to being pure of heart, and I'm not sure that it is. Pure of heart stuff in reality is a lot bigger than, hey, did you take money out of a Coke machine or yeah, yeah. whatever. That's what I'm pure, saying. Yeah, because pure of heart, like he still is going to grow, and we saw growth and learning and all that. He's also 14 years old. Yeah. So of course, like just like any human being is going to grow and learn and change over time, just because he might have these adolescent type behaviors doesn't mean that he's not pure heart. So at the end of this movie, it's Shazam and his foster siblings. They're all yeah. Shazam's kind of Shazam! wizards in like the suits. And they're all Do awesome. you think they're all going to be in the sequels? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So That's think, part like, of the whole they're... Shazam story. Okay. And I, could, I don't... I don't know, Shazam, I didn't look it up before I went and saw, but I know that either that thing that happened in the movie is true, or that they all combine into one Shazam, okay? Oh. So when it happened in the movie, when they all, I was like, oh! Like, I was like, that's awesome, because that's, okay. you know, close to the I just didn't story. expect it, so I expected the movie to be about this single character, and then at the end, it was all the siblings, and I was like, huh, um, okay. So I haven't really bought into all the siblings quite yet. Like, I no. bought into them as side characters, not as... Like, we're all going to be superheroes in, like, how I bought into the Avengers. Like, I love Captain America. I love Iron Man. I love, like, you know, I like them, like, all. Like think You like all of them, Rachel? I think so. You like the Black Widow? Yeah. And Hawkeye? Yeah. All he can do is shoot arrows. I don't have a problem with that. You hate arrows. <laughs> she hates arrows. Um, the only other thing I had a, took a small issue with, and which is really, I wasn't really expecting a big thing, was that, first of all, these two parents that are foster parents, they hit like the foster kid jackpot because right. when we went to foster training classes, we were warned of like some serious, disruptive, disturbing behavior that could be commonplace. And this family, I mean, let's just say like they just hit the jackpot well, with their foster kids. I mean, like the worst thing that. they had going on was like a kid ran away a lot. Like, you know? Yeah. I'm just saying a little bit idealized. I did like who they casted as a parents. Um, I thought they were like really warm and loving and yeah. uh, played that role nice. The only other thing I have to say about it is I really don't like movies when they center around kids and the parents aren't part of things. So I would hope in a sequel that the parents would know that their kids are superheroes because that never happened in this movie. And I don't like when kids are just like managing their own lives because I don't know. We've been kids. I know kids out there, they are in no ways, like, they need adult supervision. Like, they need adult guidance. They can't be making, like, big life choices. Like, they need mentors and guidance. I need a mentor right now, and I'm 38, you know? Yeah. Well, so, but it, if one thing that they might, it might be best for them, but that doesn't always exist in the world. Well, it doesn't always exist, but if you're painting for me this, like, warm, loving family that's all going to come together, I really hope the parents are part of it in, the, in a sequel. Instead of being out in the dark because, oh, parents, we don't ever know what's going on in our own house with our own children. They go out. You know, like, that's every, like, if it's a kid or high school movie, like, parents have no idea what the kids are ever doing. And they're doing all this crazy stuff having, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I would just, I don't think parents are that dumb. And, yeah. Depends who the parents are. Yeah. If you're going to paint to me in this movie that these are great parents because that's what you did, then I don't think that they're dumb. So you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if you're going to paint to me that these aren't great parents who are kind of vapid and uninvolved, then that makes sense to me. But that's not what they did in this movie. So I'm just saying, give me, like, give me both things then. So, But maybe they will in a sequel. They may not have had time to fit all that in in this one movie, and I definitely don't want them overfilling the movie. Yeah. We just watched a movie that did that recently. Right. Oh, well, we had a battle angel. Too much. I think that they did the parent. They did do a good job of showing um, parents who truly loved their children and who made a big commitment to a family lifestyle and all those really great things that I like to see on the screen. Mm -hmm. And showed it in a difficult environment where you had a group of foster kids who, all of them, we say that they were idyllic in a way, but I mean one of them had you know, the crutch thing had some kind of issue there. Yeah. They're, they were all different in, in different ways or whatever. And, and the main character himself had been in and, out, in and out of foster homes or whatever. So they made a point of, I think, displaying uh, true good goodness and love in a way, despite your uh, criticisms of the other parts of their characters. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so did you like this movie at all, though, Rachel? You've been given a lot of criticism. I want to hear positive things because it was a really good movie and I loved it. Well, when I said go, I said all the positive things about yeah, it. But you said all the positive things about it in like 10 seconds. And, and then, then I also said off. a positive thing about the pure of heart and what that really was. But other than that, like it was funny. I thought the like everything like came together really well. The relationship between Billy Batson and kind of reminded his me of The Incredibles. Freddy, his foster brother, um, was really good. Oh. Um... Yeah, I just, I mean, I thought, like, everything else worked in the movie. Yeah, I really liked it. They incorporated, like, the two most popular DC characters in the movie with, like, Batman and Superman. The characters they talked, talked about a lot Batman about those, and, and, and they also had a super great scene at the end that I, yeah. like, yeah. Superman comes into the scene, but you can only just see the S, like... It was just like, and I was like, oh, that's right, this is DC, and, like, yeah. Shazam might know another superhero, and, you know... Uh, or would at this point, and it, so that was like really fun stuff that they got to do. Yeah, so I'm excited about where DC is headed. Um, it's a little disjointed right there in the whole DC universe. <laughs> yeah. Because um, Ben Affleck's not going to return as Batman yeah. in the upcoming film, The Batman, which is coming out within like two years. And I, I find that really like odd, because I'm trying to wrap my head around that if they're going to reboot Batman, does that mean we lose Aquaman? Like Shazam, I, the Flash, do they I mean. all like, have to start over sense. too? I don't think so. Because are you going to recast Jason Momoa? I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but there is a possibility, so I've heard rumors. One of my favorite characters is the Flash, and yeah. he's in this universe, and I love to see a Flash movie. But the last rumor I heard was that they were waiting to see if they wanted to do a Flashpoint Which would reset paradox, everything. Which, right, we're... Flash would go back in time and reset things, and some things would be different, and some things would be the same. Yeah. So, so basically, it gives them like an artistic license to do whatever they want. Yeah. Which is a really nice feature to have in the DC universe. Ah, <laughs> yes. Which happens if you don't watch the Flash TV. So yeah. CW. Which is really. We good. highly recommend you do. Amaze balls. All right. You know what else is Amaze balls, Rachel? When people like, comment, and subscribe. You know this is its own channel now, so. It is. So no we used to be merged on... into our other channel, but we started from scratch. So like. We really want you to like, comment, and subscribe. We don't really want it. We really need it. <laughs> so we can build up this subscription on, on this as its own little baby channel right now. Just a little baby. A little baby. And you know what? We're really close. Last time I checked, we're around 990, 997 subscribers away from our goal of 1,000 <laughs> by the end of the year. So, you know, do your part. In fact, do more than your part. <laughs> And seasons one through three in the Flash CW series, like, nice little package. All the, it is so good. Yeah. Like, I can't even tell you how good it is. So Amazing. good.